Wednesday, August 21. Can you drink my cup? Read Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 45. How do these verses reveal the continued ignorance of the disciples regarding not only Jesus' mission, but what it means to follow him? Chapter 10 of Mark, beginning at verse 32. They were on their way to Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to them. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, Let one of us sit at your right, and the other at your left, in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink, or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink, and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As Jesus approaches Jerusalem, he reveals to his disciples what will happen there. It is not a scenario they believe in or want to hear. Jesus' specificity as to the outline of his death and resurrection is striking, but when it is not what you want to hear, it is all too easy to dismiss. This is apparently what James and John do as they come to Jesus with a private request. Jesus rightly asks for more specifics, and they respond that they want to sit on his right and left in his glory. It is easy to criticise their request as rank egocentricism. But these two men have dedicated themselves to Jesus' ministry, and their desires were probably not wholly selfish in nature. Jesus seeks to deepen their understanding of just what they are requesting. He asks if they can drink his cup or be baptised with his baptism. His cup will be the cup of suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross. And here we compare with Mark 14, verse 36. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And his baptism will be his death and burial, as we read in Mark 15, verses 33 to 47. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was 
the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So, as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. And that's where events there parallel his baptism recorded in Mark chapter 1. But James and John do not see it. They glibly reply that they are able. Jesus then prophesies that indeed they will drink his cup and be baptised with his baptism. James was the first of the apostles to die a martyr's death, as we read in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. John was the longest lived of the apostles and was exiled to Patmos, as we read in Revelation 1, verse 9. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. But Jesus indicates that places in glory are set by God. How did the other disciples respond to Jesus' answer? Not too well. The same Greek word, again a kakteo, to be angry or indignant, is used in Mark 10.41 as in Mark 10 verse 14, regarding Jesus' anger over keeping the children away from him. Mark 10.41 reads, When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. And verse 14, when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Jesus then calls the group together to give one of his most profound teachings. He indicates that Gentile rulers use power for personal advantage, but in the kingdom of God, power must always be used to uplift and bless others. Jesus leads the way as the king of the kingdom of God. How? By giving his own life as a ransom. Not quite what his followers expected to hear. And so to finish today, what does it mean as a Christian to be a servant to others? That is, how do you manifest this principle in your daily interaction with people? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.